Trader Joe is at it again. Right before I started recording this podcast, I get an update that the Detroit Pistons have traded for Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks. What does this do for the Pistons in the big picture? How do these guys help them in the immediate future? We'll talk about all those things in today's episode of the Lockdown Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Pistons podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Arcade 1UP. Lockdown Pistons is partnering with Arcade 1UP to give away three free NBA Jam Shack machines. That's right, three of those. These are the guys known for making the incredible retro three-quarter scale at-home arcade games like Pac-Man, Golden Tee, and many more. Enter to win on arcade1up.com slash locked on. That's arcade1up.com slash locked on for your chance to win one of the NBA Jam Shack machines. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast on our way to 5,000 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. So again, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons and hit that subscribe button. All right. Pistons have traded for New England Well and Alec Burks. We're going to give each of those guys their own segment, and we're going to try to talk about why the Pistons made this trade. First off, the reason why the Knicks traded the Pistons, New England Well, and Alec Burks for basically nothing is because they're clearing up cap space to go after Jalen Brunson. This cleared up about $19 million in cap space for them, so that's why they did it. And if you guys didn't already think this already, I don't know if if there are some of you out there that were just like big Brunson to Pistons guys. Um, but he's not coming to the Pistons. That that like that that's gone. And I think this also shows that they're not going to be in contention for any of the other big guys either. I've told you guys that a few times over the last week on the podcast. I know James Edwards of the Athletic also reported that. I believe a few days ago. I don't know the exact day, but he also reported that on the Athletic that the Pistons were more likely to go after veteran guys to fill out the cat or fill out the roster instead of going after one of the big free agents in free agency this year. But First, the first play I want to talk about is New England's Noel. And if you guys are listeners of the Lockdown Pistons for a while now, if you guys have been listening since I took over, I believe like a year and a half ago now it's been, um, if you guys have been listening since then, you guys will know that I've used New England's Noel as the example for the type of center that I'd love for this team to have many, many times. Now, last season, obviously, I used to talk about New England's Noel being an example that I'd want the Pistons to have on their squad. He was under contract with the Knicks. It wasn't that I was saying – they needed to attack him in free agency, but that he was a kind of archetype and type of player I'd like to have. Now the Pistons have him. And I think he's going to do great things for the Pistons in the immediate future. Um, I'm really excited about him. I'm, I'm really excited about him. So let's, let's give you a little insight on what New Orleans the Well is going to bring to the Pistons. Uh, he's going to instantly bring rim protection to the Pistons and a lob threat. The, the Pistons have been in this situation, and we've talked about this many times in the podcast, but they, they've been stuck in this position of having, like, for example, Marvin Bagley. He's good at running lo- or, or throwing lobs up to him. He's good in the dunker spot. He's good at finishing around the rim. He's good in offense. Basically, all offensive capabilities around the basket, he's good. He fills that need. But then he's awful defensively, so you can't have him on the floor by so many minutes. You can't really start him at the five like you'd like him to. Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah Stewart's better defensively. He's getting better at protecting the rim. He can switch out and guards in the pick and roll. He, he's, he's pretty good defensively, but then he's atrocious offensively. So you can't play him as many minutes you probably would like to either because he's just so bad offensively, he sinks your offense. So the Pistons have, have, have been stuck with guys who are either good at one end and awful at the other end. And just it, 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 we've always been saying like for the past year, and especially when Marvin Bagley showed, if you could just fuse these two guys together, it would be perfect. But sadly, they weren't able to. With the owners of the well, He's going to be the guy at five. And I expect him to start at five for the Pistons. Now, he, he's a player at five that can provide for you offensively and provide for you defensively. And you don't have to worry about him being a liability on both ends. Uh, defensively, he's going to be an incredible rim protector for the Detroit Pistons. And that's something they've really lacked for a long time in Detroit. Um, Andre Drummond tried. I mean, I guess you could say he tried to be a rim protector, but he never really got to, like, good defensive – um, I, I don't know if anyone would ever call him a, a, a good to great defender. 
when he was with the Pistons. I think he had he had moments where he looked like he could be elite, but he, he never sustained it. And Isaiah Stewart, he's fine defensively, but I don't think you would call him a scary rim protector either. No one's the one I think is a legit rim protector. He missed the majority of last season. Uh, with injury, but the season before with the Knicks, he averaged 2.2 blocks per game. He's a tremendous rim protector. He's going to alter shots around the rim. He's a springy, long guy, athletic dude. Guys aren't going to just want to contest him over and over. It's not going to be a good sight for them. So that's what he's going to bring defensively uh, for the Detroit Pistons. I'm interested to see what coverage they run with him. I wonder if they run drop coverage. I I, I would be really interested in that. But he's going to be a good rim protector for the Pistons. I, I expect him to run drop coverage. However, offensively, He's a guy who doesn't need the ball in his hands. He's a low usage center. He knows his role. He doesn't need to do more. He doesn't want to do more. He's going to set screens. He's going to roll to the basket. He's going to catch lobs. He's going to finish around the rim, and that's all he's going to do for you. He's not going to ask to do more. He's not going to ask to get the ball in the post. He's not going to ask to attack mismatches. He's not going to ask to do anything. All he's going to want to do is do dribble handoffs, screen, roll to the rim, get offensive rebounds, put it back up every now and then, kick out to a three-point shooter. Like That's all he wants to do. And he's, not, he's going to be completely happy and fine with that role offensively. And not this past season again because he was dealing with injury, but the year before, per synergy, he ranked in the 73rd percentile around the basket finishing-wise, which they rank as very good. He's a really good finisher around the rim. Again, if he gets his hands on it around the rim and you throw it up to him, he's going to be slamming it down. He can throw down lobs. I, I, I think he's the perfect type of center that the Detroit Pistons have needed with who they have at their guard positions. A guy who just simply doesn't need the ball. He's going to set screens. He's going to roll to the rim. He'll catch lobs. And at the end of the end, he'll bail some guys out with being a great rim protector. I, I love this trade for New Orleans the Well. I, I, I very much am a fan of New Orleans the Well. And another part of this deal that we'll talk about this, we'll talk about this with Alec Burks as well, but the contracts, the contracts, the contracts. Yes, this freed up a lot of money for the, the New York Knicks, but the Pistons didn't really – it's not one of those big cap casualties that you think when a team's like trying to offload contracts. The Knicks were just trying to free up immediate cap space so they could sign for Jalen Brunson. Notice the world is only being paid $9 million this season, and next year is a team option. So the Pistons can opt out of its option next year and still have money in free agency next season and have plenty of flexibility to do whatever they want. Spoiler alert, Alec Burks also has the exact same thing. He has a team option next year too. So this is not going to hurt the Pistons at all cap-wise. No one's the what, $9 million? He's a really damn good player. His position, he knows his role. He's going to play his role. I think that he might get traded at the deadline. And I think that Troy Weaver might be able to pull assets out of this. So I think this offseason, before we move on to Alec Burks, I just think this offseason has been tremendous by Troy Weaver. I think he's done an excellent job. I really love this move. I love the move he made on draft night for Duran. I really love this move. I think these moves have been absolutely terrific by him. I think he deserves a ton of credit, especially for this move. Could he attract some guys? He gets some second round picks with these guys as well. He gets a few second rounders from the New York Knicks. One of the one of them being the Pistons' own second round pick. He gets some guys that are going to help in the immediate future, and guys he could also possibly flip in February for even more assets because they're going to be guys that contenders want. They have team options, so the teams will be able to decide if they want to bring them back or let them go and free up cap space. I think they. They're going to get even more assets out of these guys. So I think this is just another W move by Troy Reaver. I love getting New Orleans the well. I'm a big fan of this move. When we come back, we're going to talk about what does Alec Burks bring for the Detroit Pistons? Does he fit well? Is he what the Pistons have needed? We're going to talk all that when we come back. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors. This one is going to be Sakara. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and truly enjoy it with delicious, plant-rich, transformational nutrition that helps build a foundation for living in your best body. Looking and feeling your best shouldn't mean deprivation. Instead, choose joy and abundance. Sakara's organic, plant-rich, transformational, nutritional programs are designed to help you cultivate body intelligence so you can nourish your body and experience the results that you want. Sakara's a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Sakara gives you the tools that you need to transform your life with their organic, ready-to-eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. The nutritionally designed, chef-crafted breakfasts, lunch, and dinners are made with powerful, plant-rich ingredients helping boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Plus, it's all delivered to your door, ready to eat. Sakara's functional, plant-rich essential programs help you create a body that you love living in. From their best-selling metabolism super 
powder to the foundation, their daily supplement packs, Sakara's products are designed to support your wellness goals anytime, anywhere. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash lockdown20, or you can enter lockdown20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash lockdown20 to get 20% off your first order. That's sakara.com slash lockdown20. So I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. On our way to 5,000 subscribers, continuing to show Lockdown that we the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. I'd really appreciate it. Again, Lockdown Pistons YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. All right, so we've talked a lot about, obviously already, about New Orleans and Will. But what about Alec Burks? What's Alec Burks bringing to the Detroit Pistons? So, like I mentioned earlier, spoiler alert, Alec Burks also has the same type of contract that Nerlens Noel has. This is a guy who's going to be getting paid $10 million this season for the Detroit Pistons. Exactly. I think it's $10 million. Yes, yeah, $10 million and 12000 this season. Not bad for a guy who's going to do his role and what the Pistons need from him. And he also has a team option next year. So another guy the Pistons are acquiring that will be able to help them in the immediate future it's not a bad contract. You could potentially flip him at the deadline. And also, even if he's on the team past the deadline, they are not going to handicap your future or in the free agency that immediate offseason. You can still do whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your plans are before this trade. They can still be the exact same plans after this trade. So, again, I, this is just a, a fantastic trade by the Detroit Pistons. Like, in other years, years I would assume that the Pistons would be taking on Evan Fournier's terrible contract to get this kind of stuff get this kind of stuff off and somehow Troy Weaver again continued to get yeah Kimball Walker who's expiring Alec Burks and Nolan well who are basically expiring because they have team options the next year the Pistons will not be picking those up so I, I don't know how Troy Weaver did it but he did it so I great contract wise the salary cap is as free as ever they can do whatever they want to do next offseason in these trades will not hurt it at all so Alec Burks a player He's going to fill in right there, I believe, at that backup shooting guard spot next to Kate or not next to Cade, but next to Killian Hayes off the bench. We've talked about the 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 kind of players that the Pistons need to be looking for to fill that role. Um, I know some of you guys wanted it to be uh, you guys. You know, you guys are really high and, and really like Hamdu Diallo. I don't think it's going to be Diallo, especially after now. Uh, but Alec Burks is six six. He's two hundred and four pounds. He's a bigger guy. He's not some tiny dude. He's not going to get pushed around. And he provides spacing. He can be a six-man, seventh-man type of guy. He's a really good scorer and knows how to put the ball in the basket. Per synergy, he ranked in the 71st percentile this past season in spot-up opportunities. Very good. Pick-and-roll ball handler, he ranked in the 71st percentile. Very good. In transition, he ranked in the 84th percentile. Excellent. In handoff situations, he ranked in the 72nd percentile. Very good. All jump shots, 77th percentile. Very good. All runners, 76th percentile, very good. Catch and shoot, 85th percentile, excellent. All jump shots off the dribble, very good, 65th percentile. So again, this is another guy who will be able to simply flat out score the basketball, and he will provide spacing for the Detroit Pistons. And again, I'm not going to read the stats that I've read. I feel like over the last 10 episodes for how historically awful the Detroit Pistons offense was, especially when it came to spacing the floor, but you guys get the message, and they've desperately needed to address that. Alec Burks is a guy who's going to help address that. Over the past two seasons, first year with the Knicks, he shot 41% from the feet or 41% from deep on five attempts a game. This past season, he shot 40% from deep on just about five attempts a game. Again, this dude's going to provide spacing. He's going to do exactly what the Pistons need him to do. He's probably going to slide in there and play around 25 minutes a game for the Pistons, 24, 23 minutes, somewhere in that area off the bench for the Pistons. He's going to provide spacing for them. And whether that's in the starting lineup or coming off the bench. Again, if, if they decide to slow or slowly bring on Jay and Ivy, which I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. Do I think Ivy starts? Yes. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they try to bring on Ivy slow and maybe start Burks out the gate. If they start Burks next to Cade, he'll fit perfectly. He'll space the floor. He's a guy who can take some of that pressure to score off of Cade. He can create for himself in the pick and roll in isolation. This is a guy who can score the basketball. He can space the floor. 
if K gets doubled, he V kicks to this guy on a driving kick, or when he gets doubled, he just simply makes the swing pass. Alec Burks are gonna, is going to make teams pay. He's going to make teams pay. He's going to space the floor. And that's him in the starting lineup. He can come off the bench. He can play 25 minutes. I really love this trade by the Detroit Pistons, man. I I'm, I'm, I really love that they get two guys, two guys, who will be able to impact this team immediately. And I think this is the last episode I said this to you guys. I don't want the Pistons to have a good team on the floor. I don't want them to have a team like last year on the floor either, though. I'd like them to have a team on the floor from two years ago. The team from two years ago was not a very good team, but they were a competent team. They could run a competent offense. They could run a competent defense. They had adequate spacing. The guys weren't great players. They just weren't good enough to win enough games. But their archetypes, they all fit well together, and they were able to have a functional offense on the floor. They may not have had it, you know, succeed at high rates, but figuratively, and they were able figuratively and simply running the offense, they were able to do because the pieces made sense. I was I, that's the kind of offense and the kind of defense I want from this team this year. This past season, the offense they it had no chance. They it wasn't able to even run a functional offense because of how badly it was put together. And just the pieces didn't fit. It, it was terrible. It, it, I don't want to see that. I also don't want to see them to be too good because you guys know I want them to be in the top five pick range next year in that heavy draft class. So I think that's what Toro Reaver is really doing good with right now. He's putting a team together so far that looks like it's going to be competent on offense. It's going to be competent defensively. It has a chance, or maybe let me change that. Let me change that real quick. It has a chance to be competent offensively. Looks like it has a chance to be competent defensively. They don't look like they'll be too good to where they, you know, they're competing for a play-in. They don't look like they'll be so bad as like last year to where they can't even run offenses. They look like they'll be like that team from his first year. And I really enjoyed watching that first year. I think a lot of us did. It was a competent team. They fought hard. They just weren't able to pull out games in the end. I think we're all going to be okay with that. So I really love this trade by the De- by the Detroit Pistons, by Troy Weaver. Another A-plus move by him, in my opinion. It keeps cap space flexible moving forward. You get guys who will help you in the immediate future and guys who could also possibly get assets for it at the trade deadline. I think contenders will want both of these guys on these great contracts that they have. I love this move by Troy Weaver, man. He, he's really won me over. If he, if, if he didn't have me won over before the, this offseason, he's won me over a lot this offseason because it, he's he's done some really good moves I thought were, were pretty incredible moves. So clap it up for Troy Weaver. But when we come back, this does raise some questions, but what the hell is going on in the front court? What, what's the plan for who starts at center? Who plays at power forward? Who's the backup center in power forward? What the hell's going on? We'll talk about that when we come back from the ad break. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is a continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check out on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, golf, obviously NBA, college basketball, NFL, college football, tennis, all kinds of stuff you can do over there. All kinds of sports over at BetOnline.net. If you go to the basketball section already, you'll see favorites that you can go ahead and bet on next season already, right after the season ends. The worst teams, potential rookie of the years, all those kind of things already at BetOnline.net. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about their trends and action today. BetOnline, where the game starts. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast on our road with 5,000 subscribers. Continuing to show Lockdown. We are the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. But what's going on in the front court, man? What the hell is happening? I love this move. I, I love the move to get known as the world. I think he's a perfect type of center to start. I love getting Jalen Duran in, in the draft. I think he's going to be a future starting center for the Detroit Pistons. His archetype is exactly the type of archetype that I'd love to have on the Pistons. And I honestly think the Pistons could have picked a better mentor for him than Lewis Noel. Now, Duran looks like he may have the potential to spread his floor out to the three-point line. He has good form. He showed that he could potentially hit, hit outside shots. But outside of that, the archetype that you want from him is kind of the exact same archetype you want from Lewis Noel. I think Nolan Noel will be a credible mentor for him. So I like both of those pickups. 
But still, what the hell is going on in the front court? What's going to be happening? In other news, Luca Garza's option was not picked up, so he will not be returning to the Pistons. Neither was Carson Edwards' option. He was not picked up. And Frank Jackson was officially not picked up. His option was declined, and it doesn't look like any of those guys will be returning to the Pistons. Thank Frank Jackson for his time here. Thank Luca Garza for his time here. We had his dad on the podcast. Uh, great, great family. Rooting for him. But the reason why I bring up Luca Garza having his team option decline because at least that takes off one center off the roster. But even still, it looks like they're going to be bringing back Marvin Bagley for sure. They got Isaiah Stewart, Kelly Olenek, Marvin Bagley, Jalen Duran, Miller's Noel. And now I'm drawing a blank, dude. How? Why do I always do this? I I always draw a blank, man. I I, I don't. It, it's really frustrating, man. Why I do this? But overall. They have a lot of people in this front court. So it's like, how who are they going? How are they going to find minutes for all these guys? How? How are they going to find minutes? Who's going to play? Who's not going to play? And how are they going to space the floor with these two guys? Remember earlier in the podcast, I said they potentially could have a competent offense. If they trot out there, Cade, Jade Ivy, Sadiq, Isaiah Stewart, and Norris Noel, I'm going to have to say prayers for. Cade and Jay and Ivy because that floor will not be spaced at all. And the thing is, he, let's say Isaiah Stewart comes out. He's starting at the four. Let's say he comes out. He shoots like 34% from deep the first like four or five games of the season. Okay. He's shooting like two or three games shooting 34%. Even if he's doing that, even if he's doing that defense is one, one, I don't think that's a good enough percentage to make it worth it at first. And second, Defenses still won't be respecting him. It's not like they'll be chasing out, trying to close out at him. It's not like they'll be hugged up on denying him the ball or anything. They're still not going to give up driving lanes. So no matter what, even if you're one of the people who believe Isaiah Stewart will be a good shooter this season, the first month or so of the season, defenses are not going to change how they guard Isaiah Stewart. So if they start Isaiah Stewart with Nerons Noel, with Jay and Ivy and Kay cutting him in the backcourt, there will be zero spacing. There, there will not be any type of spacing for the Detroit Pistons, it will, it, it's going to be tough. It, it's going to be absolutely tough spacing-wise. Now, if they wanted to start Kelly Olenek at the four, that, that would make more sense spacing-wise, but I really don't think they do that. It doesn't make – it sounds like they want to go full youth development, development, which makes sense. But also, it doesn't make sense if you're going to put out a lineup out there that could potentially just stop any kind of development from happening. Now, again, like I said, even if you are one of the people who believe that Isaiah Stewart will be a good shooter this year, if he's a good shooter for the first month of the season, I promise you defenses are not going to change how they're guarding him. So it's going to be interesting to see how Dwayne Casey does this, how Dwayne Casey puts out capable lineups that will have adequate spacing. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it while keeping everybody happy because they also picked up Hamdou Diallo's option. So how are you going to keep him happy? We saw after the first few games when he wasn't playing what it looked like, how he was getting – Pretty frustrated making it known on social media. He had a little dust-up with Dwayne Casey in the sideline. Except this year, I don't think he's going to be able to have just a dust-up and then all of a sudden be given minutes to get back in the rotation. I don't see him in the rotation at all, no matter what. I just don't see it happening. So I, I don't see – I don't envy Dwayne Casey's position this year. I, I think it's going to be incredibly tough on him. I don't know how he's going to find the lineups that that will work while keeping everybody happy. It's, it's going to be incredibly tough. They're going to be expecting – they're going to need like internal improvement desperately with outside shooting. Like, like it, it's going to have to happen. Isaiah Stewart's going to have to become a good shooter this year if they're actually going to start him at the four. He has no choice. The team has no choice. He's going to have to become a good shooter. Killing Hayes, he has no choice. Killing's going to have to be a good shooter this year, not just for himself, but again, for the team. Heck, even Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley might have to become a, a better shooter. Not only for himself, but again, for the team. Because in the front court, it just doesn't look like they have anybody who's going to be able to space the floor. And I wouldn't be shocked if they move Kelly Olenek. Because the front court really is loaded right now. Someone's just not going to play. And I think Kelly Olenek's the, 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 the first person you think of that's going to get moved. Woj already tweeted out, and I also am under the understanding that neither Nerlens Noel or Alec Burks will be moved. They want these guys on the team. So I don't think Noel is going anywhere. So if one of these guys go anywhere, it's Kelly Olenek. But he may not be movable because of his contract. They might have to attach a second rounder to him. And again, if they're going with the whole youth movement, I don't see why they'd even play Kelly Olenek over some of these guys. It's just, 
it's a tough situation for Dwayne Casey this season. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, he, he's gonna have to rely a ton of on internal development, and if that doesn't come, whew, the spacing, man, the spacing is gonna be really tough. Another thing, Jane Ivy, for his own sake, he might have to. Ho- hopefully, he's a legitimate three point shooter, because if that lineup goes out there, at least for the first month, at the very least for the first month, that's if Stu proves to be a great shooter or a good shooter from beyond the arc. At least for the first month, it's going to be terrible. Spacing's going to be terrible. And if Isaiah Stewart does not prove to be a good shooter and they continue rocking with him at the four in the starting lineup, good luck. Just good luck. Good luck. And the spacing just won't be there. So uh, I, while I love these moves, I think they uh, are ne- they address needs that the Pistons have desperately needed. Um, it, it, the, the front court makes this a little questionable like how they're going to be able to put lamps out there that make sense uh, pieces wise. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they handle it and how they do it. But man, this offense is going to be interesting, man. It's gonna... Defensively, I don't have too many worries. Defensively, I think they'll actually probably be okay. And with Dwayne Casey teams, that's probably all they care about really. And then you guys know how I feel about that, man. I'm tired of sacrificing offense for defense. But defensively, I actually think they'll probably be all right on defense. It's just offensively, it's, it's major questions. And I don't really see an answer for it with the current pieces that are on the team. Like, I think they're just going to have to run in transition, which I said, I believe that that could be their identity. It may be how they make their bread and butter in transition. If that's the case, okay, I, I'd be happy with that. But in the half court offense, it's getting it's getting tough. It's getting tough to see how they're going to be able to run a half court offense that's that's like competent. Um, I think they're really going to make light. It, it's going to be pretty hard on Cade and Jane Ivy, but who knows? Maybe Stu becomes a great shooter all of a sudden this season, and after the first month of the season, teams realize okay, this is a great shooter, and now defenses start to change, and maybe it's just a first month of hardship, and then things start to change. Maybe Killian becomes a great outside shooter. Maybe Marvin Bagley becomes a decent outside shooter, and all this stuff goes. How all this stuff I'm talking about right now doesn't matter, but that's wishful thinking. I guess that's what we should have now. Uh, but in totality, though, I love this move. I, I love these trades by Troy Weaver. I think he's doing an incredible job uh, this offseason. I really love these moves. Um, and the Pistons, according to my math, should have around 17 to $20 million left, and that's not including Marvin Bagley's cap hold. Now, once they, if they don't ever resign that cap hold or – or make a new deal with Marvin Bagley, they're going to be over the cap. But if you, if you want to take that that cap hold out the way, because they can be signed at any, at any point, really, and anytime, as soon as they come to an agreement with a contract for him, that will go away as well. So they're working with, I believe, like 17 to $21 million in cap space. I would not expect them to do anything else crazy. At least I, I, I don't expect that. Um, I don't expect them to really do much in free agency. But I guess... I guess we'll see. Maybe they get like a stretch four or something. Maybe they do something crazy and add on to the front court. Except this time they get shooting. And maybe that means two guys are gone in the front court. Who knows? Who the hell knows what's going to happen in the front court, man? It's crazy up there. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for listening to today's episode. Thank you for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers. Continue to show Lockdown to be the best and fastest going fan base at the Lockdown Network. I really like these trades. Let me know what you guys think about them in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the front court? What the hell is going to happen? What kind of lineups are the Pistons going to put out there? Let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kukil. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, everybody. Peace out. Hopefully nothing crazy happens until the next episode. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, everybody.